Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm John Terre, President and CEO of the Boulder Chamber, and I welcome you to another edition of our opportunity on Chamber Chat to speak with our Boulder business community and Boulder Chamber members about all the things that we're doing at the Boulder Chamber to address your business needs, particularly during this COVID-19 period, uh, but also to chat with some of the leaders who are helping us to work through the challenges that we're facing as a community, our economy, and as business leaders. And today we are pleased to have a special guest from the governor's office, Casey Wolf, who is the senior advisor for the governor for COVID-19 response, resilience, and recovery. And so we're looking forward to our chat with Casey. But before we get started, let me just tell you about a few things that are happening at the Boulder Chamber in the upcoming week. So first of all, on Tuesday, August, Four, we're going to have our Boulder Young Professionals Lunch and Learn. And the topic will be how to negotiate your salary effectively. I need to learn from this one. I'll be paying attention. And at the American Association of University Women will present their Work Smart Salary Workshop. Uh, so whether you're looking for a new job, whether you're thinking about pressing for a raise, looking for a promotion, or you're asking for a certain desired pay level. Let me just say, this is the session for you. So tune in, make sure to register online. Again, that's August 4. In addition, we have our Safer at Home Industry Support Sessions. These are the Boulder County Public Health, the Boulder Chamber, in partnership with all our other Boulder County Economic Development and, and Business Support Partners, coming together with specific uh, webinars to help answer your questions about the challenges that you're facing, the new or, um, orders, and how to help minimize confusion around your implementation of these orders during your work operations. Those are on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. And watch for the very specific industry practice sessions that we'll have. You can always find the schedule of these activities on the COVID-19 resource page, boulderchamber.com slash COVID-19. So make sure to check those out, the Safer at Home Industry Support Sessions. And then finally, we have our new initiative. It's called the Chamber Check-In. And this is our live on Facebook opportunity to chat with some of our business leaders every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. And we'll be having a bunch of variety of guests who will talk with, for about just 10 minutes about what they're doing to address challenges they're facing, some of the best practices that they're implementing to overcome those challenges, to serve their customers, but also make sure that they're doing it in a safe fashion. So I urge you to get online, check out those, uh, those Facebook Live, chamber check-ins again on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. And if you like what you see, show them some love, give them a like, share their posts. They're always interesting. So urge you to check those ones out. So now I wanna to get to our conversation with Casey and I'm just really looking forward to this chat as I know that she is a leader in, as I said, advising the governor on his response to the COVID-19 circumstances. And so I'm gonna start by asking Casey, what are you seeing right now um, with respect to the battle against COVID-19? And what implications is that having for the governor's response to that, uh, this current crisis? Um, well, hi, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the chance to join you and just wanna say how it, um, encouraging it is to, see what you're doing to support the businesses in your community and really helping them learn from each other and um, you know, borrow each other's best practices. This is such a challenging time and just it's really heartening to see that. So thank you for all you're doing. Um, pleasure, Casey. Uh, I'm happy to talk a little bit about what we're seeing. I think I also have um, a few different epi, um, epidemiological trends that I'll share with you. I think at a high level, what we're seeing is that when we went into the stay at home period, it was extremely difficult and it was very successful in suppressing the virus. And since we have come out of that stay at home period, now into the safer at home period where we see different levels of 
openings in different communities based on um, what variances they have, what industries they have, uh, we're starting to see the virus return. And that's not a surprise, that's, that's what we expected. And what we're trying to do is really calibrate that level of reopening with our ability to continue to contain that virus. And we're in this delicate, as people have called it, a dance of making sure that we're at sort of the maximum level of opening we can be without setting in motion the kind of growth that would challenge our ability to take care of everybody who gets sick. And that's really one of our goals is to make sure that we are controlling the virus at a level so that everybody who needs to go to the doctor, to go to the hospital, to maybe even go to the ICU has that care available to them and that we're not, it's not growing faster than our ability to take care of them. So I'm gonna show you a few slides to talk about what the epidemiology has looked like over the past few weeks briefly, and then talk about why we're in this really critical moment um, in virus control. So if I share my screen, I hope you're able to, to see that. I'm able to see it, looks good. Great. Yep. So what I'm showing you on this screen is actually the percentage change of our total number of cases by week. And I think this is really important that we're not just looking for one you know, set number of cases that all of a sudden everything changes. What we're actually looking at is both the total number and the rate of change. And I think the way to think about this is that if you're driving down the road and you see a car 100 yards ahead of you and you're going 15 miles an hour, you're not gonna be that worried about your ability to stop in time. But if you're going 90 miles an hour, you might think you're in trouble, right? And so that's kind of what we're trying to look at is both what's the total number that we have, but also how fast is it changing? And so what you see here is the red columns are when we've had an increase week over week, and it shows you the percentage increase. And so if we're going, you know, five or 10% a week, we might think that's kind of steady growth. What we've started to see at the beginning of July is those jumps be much more significant, going from a 13% growth to all of a sudden a 40% growth. And those are one of the things that we look at to think of, well, are we in a place that we can sustain or are we in a place where we have to contemplate policy to try to turn around this trend? Now I'm gonna show you something kind of similar, oopsies, something kind of similar, but instead of looking at case data, I'm showing you hospitalization data. Because you can say, well, you know, if you're doing more testing, you're gonna catch more cases. And you know, that's a good thing. That's what we're trying to do. But if you look at hospitalization numbers, that's something that's not sensitive to how many tests you're doing in a community. If you're sick and you go to the hospital, you go to the hospital. So what this um, chart shows us is the hospitalizations um, over the, you know, since April. And the red line is what we would expect hospitalizations to have looked at, uh, to have looked like if we stayed at the stay at home level, which is intuitive, right? That's the lowest. Um, and you know, that's, that's what we would have gotten. The blue line is uh, the level we would expect if we had stayed at the social distancing levels that we were all at, um, really at the beginning of the safer at home phase. And the orange curve is actually what our current hospitalization trend tells us. And so what this tells us is right now, based on the curve, we're our reproductive number, the one person is sick, how many people do they get sick, right? If I'm sick and I get five people sick, then my reproductive number is five. If I'm sick and I get nobody sick, then my reproductive number is zero. What we're trying to do is keep that reproductive number as close to one as possible, because that means it's pretty controlled. And so if we were at the stay at home level, we'd be, you know, at 0.5, well below one. Where we are right now is pretty high above one. And so what that means is the trend that we're seeing is that we're in this kind of fragile moment where I think we still have the opportunity to change the trend. But if we don't take action to change the trend, we could potentially be on a course back like we were in March where we were growing really fast. And so that's why what we're really focused on now is supporting local communities to continue to follow the guidelines and maybe modify them to make them even more protective in their community. That's why the governor issued the mask order, and that's why the governor has a two-week pause on variance um, applications, because we're in this moment where we actually kind of need to stop and assess where we are before taking further reopening steps, and also before taking closure steps, because what we want to do is, um, you know, not use these, you know, we want to use a scalpel, not a hammer, in how we do this. And so right now we're in this critical moment where we want to ask everybody to really step up 
wear a mask, work from home if you can, really take those preventive measures and actually try to get us back closer to that blue line. Love it. Well, let me ask you, maybe as you transition out um, of the slides, Casey, you know, all of these uh, regulations have some sort of an economic impact. And, uh, um, you know, as a business organization, we are obviously quite concerned about making sure that our businesses can thrive and that we can uh, strong, get back to a vital economy. Um, but understanding that this is a public health crisis and we need to operate safely. So I'm wondering, how does the governor's team weigh those different um, calculations, the, the public health and the need for economic vitality? Mm -hmm. That's a really excellent question, and it's really at the heart of how we are navigating this crisis. So my job is not just to advise the governor on COVID response, but to also advise him on resilience and recovery. And so we actually have a leadership team that's composed of both our public health officials, but then also our economic officials, including our executive director of OEDIT, our executive director of labor and employment, um, our budget office. We actually have all of those cabinet level leaders convene multiple times a week to talk about the crisis and really look at it from three dimensions, right? What are the public health implications? What are the economic trends we're seeing? What are the economic opportunities we're seeing? How are the public health interventions? What are their potential economic impacts? How can we assess them from all of these different disciplines so that we can really be clear about how this is impacting Coloradans in every part of their life? Because, you know, it's, we, we are people with jobs, we, our health is important, our livelihood is important, the ability to care for our families are important. And so that's absolutely the kind of information that the governor asks for before he makes a decision. And I'll say that was actually a big part of the, the thinking on the mask order because the mask order actually potentially has positive economic benefits associated with it. It's one of the very few strategies that has a public health benefit and potentially an economic benefit if it can keep our businesses open by reducing virus transmission. And so those are absolutely the, the two things that we look at um, all the time. And it's important that we, um, you know, that we navigate the public health crisis, trying to mitigate the economic crisis that we are experiencing and will likely experience um, as a result of how the virus is changing our economy. Yeah, I get it. And I appreciate that the governor does bring those different perspectives to the table when they're evaluating what sort of regulations are appropriate and when they can start to draw down the, the restrictions. And I'll also note that, that your team has been a great partner with the Boulder Chamber and just listening uh, to concerns from our businesses, responding, um, and to evaluate some uh, different nuances that might be helpful for their business, but also uh, maintaining public health. So I, I just thank you um, and the governor for, for that. Um, so I'm just going to ask just as we, as we close out, you know, this for the foreseeable future, and, and obviously we're, you know, that means when hopefully we have a vaccine. I just wonder what is the vision that you and the governor's team has for our state in living with this virus um, in a way that does, again, promote public safety, but also allow our economy to thrive and return to a solid state? Um, and how can our business community help you in, in that achieving that vision? Mm -hmm. Well, first off, I think that the business community is one of Colorado's superpowers, and I think it's really been one of the reasons why Colorado has been an outlier compared to some of the rises we've seen in other states surrounding us. I think that the business community has been exemplar in the way that they have looked to this challenge, and so thank you for this question. Um, I think the, the hope here and the vision here is that we make life as sustainable as possible in these next few months, and also recognize that there's going to be some lessons we have to learn that we'll carry further. You know, even if we have a vaccine or a treatment, coronavirus isn't going to go away, but we're going to be able to live with it and manage it much more effectively with those tools. I think we think about um, social distancing levels. So you know, social distancing levels of 0% means life is perfectly back to normal the way it was before. Social distancing of 100% is you're in a cabin in the woods and you're not interacting with anyone. We think that if we can hit around, you know, 55 to 65% social distancing, we can keep the virus at the level that we can maintain. And so practically what that means and the way the business community can help is thinking about what does 65% less look like, right? Can you have 65% of your employees, for example, working from home? That takes a big chunk out of social distancing. When you are um, 
engaging with customers or even just socially engaging, how are you making sure that that's being done outside with smaller groups with maybe half of the size groups you would do normally? And what we can do is if we can come up with ways to do that social distancing, to do that mask wearing, to do that reduction in group size, to do that increase in work from home and get to that 65% through those strategies, then we can lessen or prevent the need to use the more difficult strategies of shutdown. Cause that's something that we never, no, nobody wants to go through that again. That's, it was and is still extremely painful. And so I think the key thing um, we actually have, and I'll share, have been seeing increased outbreaks in offices as work from home policies have begun to be relaxed. And it's really understandable that they've begun to be relaxed because it's really, it's really difficult to maintain company culture and, and all of that remotely. But to the extent that it doesn't impact your bottom line to have people working from home and being able to continue that, that's probably one of the um, key strategies similar to mask wearing that has one of our sort of minimal economic uh, harm, maybe even potential benefit, while at the same time helping us achieve that more sustainable level of social distancing. And so just want to thank folks that have been doing that in their companies and encourage uh, people to consider if they can continue that or potentially expand their programs if they're finding success with it. Yeah, I, I get it. And I understand that for our business community, we certainly are making that a clear statement. We need to follow the guidelines in order to make sure that we are partners with the governor's office, with our public health authorities in keeping the virus suppressed. That's going to allow us all to get back to work safely. Um, Casey, I can't thank you enough. I, I, we were just chatting beforehand. This is difficult work. It's a very challenging job that you have right now, advising the governor in areas of keeping us all safe, but making sure that we can get back to work. And I know it's, uh, I, I feel more confident knowing that you're at the table and that you have such a great team to work with. So I thank you. I thank the governor who has been a great leader nationally um, in addressing this challenge and know that we're partners with you in getting through this together. So thank you so much for being with us. Um, I just have a couple of other things to address with our uh, chamber members and our business community. Um, first, I just want you to know that business is happening at the Boulder Chamber safely. Um, so what does that mean? Well, we're here to serve you. And that is happening in a virtual way because yes, our office is closed to the public, but we're available to you anytime that you want us because our doors are open virtually. It's critically important that you reach out and let us know how we can support you to get through this challenging time. So as I've said, at the Boulder Chamber, business is happening safely. So with that and with the Casey breaking news our golf tournament presented by blue federal credit union just sold out thank you to everyone that registered we look forward to seeing you at the tournament and also at the awards ceremony watch party all the details will be sent to your email so with that and with the casey's uh um urging us to make sure that we follow those guidelines i'm going to say make sure to wear that mask when you're around town or at the office, and we'll see you next month or next week or whatever it is at Chamber Chat.